What's up guys, Justin here with DCGessentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna talk about all of the Blender add-on and resource developments that I've seen over the course of the week. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, and this isn't specifically a Blender development, but it's a really cool app that you can use with Blender. Polycam has rolled out a new version of their iPhone app. And so basically Polycam is an app that works with the version of the iPhone that has a LiDAR scanner. And what it does is it allows you to scan a space and actually bring in rooms from those scans into 3D. So what you do is you walk around, you scan a space, and it's going to automatically pick up things like openings. It's going to pick up doors and windows. It's going to automatically recognize furniture and include that in the 3D model that it exports. So you can take that app and you can export this to something that Blender can bring in. And so note that the free version of Polycam that works on your iPhone can export GLTF formats, meaning you can export these and bring them into Blender. So for example, this is a quick scan that I did of my kitchen. And even though you can see that the appliances aren't like, I definitely don't have a refrigerator that looks like this. It automatically recognized both my refrigerator as well as my cooktop or um, my oven and brought them in as placeholder geometry. So the other cool thing about this is these are in here as objects. So you can also delete them out or toggle them off as well. So this could be a really quick way to scan existing spaces and bring them into Blender as floor plans. And so just a final note on this, remember that you need an iPhone that has the LiDAR scanner and you also need to update your iPhone to iOS 16 because this is built on some software that's included in that new version. Otherwise, this won't show up. But I recommend if you have all of those things to download this and try it out because it's a super cool application for creating things in 3D. All right, so Sanctus Library, the procedural materials library add-on has seen another update. And with this update comes a bunch of different things. Probably the biggest new thing that came with this version is the ability to bake materials. So there's options in here to set your uh, bake sockets, and then you can click on OK. And this is basically going to go through and it's going to bake your materials um, directly inside of Blender. So it's a really fast way to take those materials and get them to more of a PBR rather than a procedural. So the bake ability has been added within this new version. In addition, there's also several new material types. So one of the types is the image to paint type, which is going to allow you to load in an image and then use this to procedurally generate more of a paint look to your material. So if you wanted to create something that looks a little more painted inside a blender, you can do that using this new node. And so some other materials have been added, including some LED type materials as well as some other materials in that list as well. So it's already a pretty comprehensive uh, group of materials and he is consistently adding new materials every month. All right, so the new version of Bag of Pie has been released and there have been updates to both the free version and the asset browser version. So um, there's several new tools for um, placing Ivy inside of Blender. So um, if you've been using this to generate Ivy, there's been some additions there that can make this easier to use and also allow you to do things like gravity and other things like that. Remember, Bagapai is free to download. So um, I'll link to that in the notes down below. So another function that's been added that I have not had a chance to play around with yet is the ability to generate custom panels from nodes. So my understanding is this is going to allow you to generate custom panels over here on the right hand side from the node setup so that you can access those different things and adjust them without having to go into the uh, into the node editor. But I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you're going to have to download this one and give it a try. Um, I think it's contained inside of the free version so anyone should be able to do that. But it is a really interesting function if that is in fact the way that this works. And then in addition he's also expanded his asset collection. This is what comes with the page version of Bag of Pie, but um, he's got different biomes for Scatter 5. So if you're using Scatter 5 in order to uh, scatter vegetation in your scenes, these biomes should work with that particular add-on. Plus he's added a bunch of new assets to his asset collection. So if you are looking for a good asset collection with different vegetation and other things like that, um, this could definitely be a good one to check out. Plus you can support Antoine and the cool work that he's doing. So I'll link to both of those in the notes down below, the free version and the asset browser version. All right, so next up, we've got a wall generation tool from Plebes XYZ. So this tool is a tool that allows you to procedural, procedurally generate walls um, and also add like cutouts and other things like that to those walls inside of Blender. So he's got two versions available on his page. There's a free version right here if you want to go try it out. And then another version with more like pre-made setups 
for his different walls. So you can either, you can select either one of those in order to give it a try. But basically the way that it works is it comes into Blender and you get these asset browser setups, right? So you've got these setups right here. And let's say I was to get rid of the one that I have. Well, basically the way this works, and it's nice, it's nice that there's actually instructions on how to use these, but say that we wanted to bring these stones in, we would set them to a pin, we would bring them in. So we wanna make sure that we uncheck the box for instance right here, but then all we do is we delete out the example plane that this comes with, and then you just retarget the curves that it comes with to your actual to your actual surface. So for example, notice how there's a curve right here for my wall. I can just tab into edit mode. I can uh, do an A and an X in order to delete their current wall, and then I can just draw a new one. So in this case, right, I'm gonna draw on top of this surface right here, like this, in order to generate my wall. And so one thing that you wanna do when you do this is you wanna take your object and you wanna make sure that this is actually targeted at your plane right here so that it generates this wall properly. So you've got a wall that you can draw on here and then there's a second curve, which is the curve that you can use in order to break or uh, remove portions of the wall. So what we could do with that one is we could just tab in edit mode, delete the curve that they have. And then let's say that we were to draw along this surface again, make sure that you're selecting the draw tool and surface. But if we were to draw a line in and out like this, what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna remove material wherever that line is. So you can use that in order to quickly move, remove material or add gaps um, to your object just like this. And so you can also come in here and you can adjust where that is. So for example, I could flatten this out by doing a scale Z zero. And then I could also move it up and down and notice how material is removed wherever that curve goes. All right, so I'll link to everything we talked about in this video in the notes down below. I'm particularly excited about that polycam update, but I'd love to hear from you. What are you interested in? What have you seen that's cool? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.